I could really go for a maple donut right now. Whew, cannot talk today. This is why I don't film in the afternoon ever. More coffee. All right, so today we have the very long awaited white mixer video. We're gonna be talking all about white foundation mixers. I think I've been saying I'm gonna do this video for like a year. We're here. So I've actually been testing out these white mixers for the last about a month and a half since foundation, no, since 15 days of foundation ended because I wanna actually tell you what I like and don't like about each one and give my full thoughts on them rather than just showing you that they exist. This is gonna be kind of a more in-depth video, not just about the actual white mixers, but about how they mix with foundations and different types and just things that are helpful to know. So I have a full two pages of notes here. Did a shit ton of research for this video, so I hope some of this stuff helps you guys out. If you're excited for this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, you can join the Bayrito family and subscribe. I upload Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. So if you're new to the mixer world, there are basically different foundation mixers that you can use to lighten, darken, or just alter the color of your foundation, whether it's adding more yellow or more red, or in my case, usually white. So if you're fair skinned, this can be a lifesaver because you can basically mix in a white product to help lighten your foundation. Even if you don't have fair skin, you can use these products to help kind of bring your summer shade of foundation into winter. If you need to lighten it and you don't want to go out and purchase a new shade, you can use it to lighten or adjust your foundation. You can also use foundation darkeners to darken your winter shade for summer if you are someone who gets tan. That is not me, but people get tan in this world. So I think something super important that we need to start out with is just the basics. So there are three main types of foundation, oil-based, water-based, and silicone-based. So oil and water, we all know, don't mix, science. So if you have a water-based foundation, you're gonna wanna pair that with probably a water-based or silicone-based mixer and primer. Same goes for oil-based foundations. There's not a whole lot of oil-based foundations out there anymore. Typically, you find foundations that are silicone-based, and then there are a few water-based foundations. So what that means is it is probably ideal to try and find a mixer that is the same base as your or kind of go-to foundation or whatever you're using that day just so it mixes the best it's not going to have any separation so i went through the ingredients on each foundation mixer to try and figure out which kind of base it is but if you need to figure out what kind of base your foundation is it's fairly simple it can be a little bit tricky and overwhelming at first but after i did fun to reading i think i found an easiest way to figure it out this is just what i've learned from my research if i am wrong at all definitely feel free to correct me down below or help each other out so the way that you can tell if it's a silicone based foundation is basically if it has any significant amount of words with cone or silo in it. So a lot of the times, if you look at the ingredients of a foundation, water or aqua will be first on the list. That doesn't mean that it's necessarily a water-based foundation. Water is typically used to give the foundation that liquidy consistency. So even though ingredients are listed from greatest to least, so a foundation might have the most amount of water, it doesn't mean it's a water-based foundation 100% of the time. If you see glycerin in there, that's likely a water-based foundation but a foundation can also have glycerin and silicone ingredients in there. So here's an example of a water-based foundation that has aqua listed as the first ingredient and also has glycerin in here, and there's not a whole lot of silicone ingredients in here, if any, I didn't see any. So in this video, I'm doing swatches of each mixer and kind of showing you how they mix with the foundation. To keep it consistent, I wanted to stick with the same foundation. That's the Milani Conceal and Perfect 2-in-1 Foundation. This is in their new lightest shade, 00. This is definitely not light, which is why I'm using it to test with the mixers. It is silicone based and it has pretty high coverage and is fairly opaque, so it's just good to test with different mixers. So when I did these swatches, I tried to use the same amount of mixer with the foundation just so we can compare them all. So I think the question I get asked the most about foundation mixers is what what's the best one that's not gonna alter the formula of my foundation? And I feel like if you think about it, anything that you mix in with something is likely gonna alter the formula because you're adding something to it. Just like any foundation, these mixers also have different finishes. They're gonna have different coverage a bit. I feel like there's definitely different mixers that are gonna perform best with different foundations, but I do have a couple standout ones that I think are pretty good across the board. So let's jump into talking about the actual mixers, what I like about each one, the price points, swatches, all of that jazz. I could really go for a maple donut right now. The first swatch I'm gonna show you in all of them is gonna be about one to one ratio foundation to mixer. And then the last swatch is gonna be just the foundation mixer on its own, just so you can see the coverage and kind of get an idea if it's more sheer, what the finish looks like. All right, so this first one I wanna start out with because I've talked about this on my channel for years. This was kind of what I used before any other foundation mixer, I think. This was kind of my go-to one for years. In the last few years, there have definitely been way more foundation mixers coming out. It's actually a thing now. So there are definitely a ton more options now, but I wanted to start with this one since I've talked about it for the longest. 
and I do have kind of new thoughts on it actually. So this is the Manic Panic Dream Tone Foundation. This one you can get for about nine bucks on Amazon. I went to Twitter to ask you guys which base you think this is because I could not figure it out. It says that it's oil free, but there is jojoba oil in here. There is no silicone. So according to you guys on Twitter, you think it's safest to say that this is a water-based mixer. So this years ago, I loved. It had a great consistency. It mixed well with the majority of my foundations. I'm 99% sure they've recently, or at least in the last six months, changed the formula of this because this is now very liquidy. It was never like this before. This is pretty liquidy. I mean, it drips down now, which it never used to do. It was kind of like a thicker cream formula before. I don't know if the new ones I just got were kind of duds or what, but I actually had a few of you guys on Twitter say the exact same thing. So this one, I'm not super into anymore. I definitely preferred how it used to be. Things I don't like about this new formula is that it's runny. I don't feel like I get quite as good of coverage with this new formula. The other one I would say is high medium coverage. This one I would say on its own is closer to high low coverage or even low medium coverage. Did I say that right? Low medium coverage, yeah. If you have the old formula, great. Do I think it's worth it to buy the new formula of this? Probably not. I think there are ones that I like better on here. So this next one is the LA Girl Pro Coverage HD Illuminating Foundation. So they actually have a whole foundation line and then they added this white mixer to it. I did a whole video on this. So this retails for between about eight and nine dollars. It is cruelty free. On their website, they say that this formula is full coverage. To me, looking at the ingredients on this one, I would say it's a silicone base. This one I feel mixes beautifully. It doesn't have any kind of weird separation. It gives a really pretty luminous finish. It has pretty decent coverage. My only downside to this one is that I'm pretty sure it breaks me out, which is a bummer because I feel like this would kind of be my go-to mixer if it didn't. This next one is the NYX Pro Foundation Mixer in white. They do have a darker shade for darkening your foundation in this. This retails for about 10 bucks. It is cruelty free. And as far as the base, I'm pretty sure it's the same kind of situation as this one. I think it's a hybrid water silicone, possibly just silicone. This one mixes well. I just feel like it's not the most opaque. It does sheer out my foundation quite a bit. I don't get nearly as good a coverage as I do with this one, but I do feel like it has more of a neutral kind of finish to it. I would say this is a satin finish, whereas this one is definitely more luminous. Don't hate it, don't love it. For me, I'd rather use something that I have to use a little bit less of and that gives me more opaque color. Next is the Stargazer White Foundation. You can get this off of Amazon. If you've ordered the under eye setting powder that I used, you probably got it with this because it comes in kind of like a pack thing for like 10 bucks on Amazon. It's cruelty free. This one looking at the ingredients was really hard for me to figure out what kind of base it is. It's definitely not oil based, but I can't figure out if it's water or silicone based. Downside to this is that it's a little bit messy. It doesn't have a pump, doesn't have a squeeze tube. It just gives you a little spatula thing and I clearly have foundation up there. I think the only foundation that I've actually preferred this mixer with is the Clinique Beyond Perfecting Foundation and Concealer. There's something about these two together that just work really well, but I feel like almost every other foundation I've tried to mix this with, I don't like it. It mixes a little weird. It's almost like, it's not chunky, but there's definitely some chunks going on in there. You get a little bit of separation until you fully blend it. So is this one worth getting? I would say only if this is your like holy grail foundation and you're pretty much only gonna be using these two together. So next up is the Body Shop Shade Adjusting Drops. I actually have a whole video on this when it first came out, I did a review on it. These retail for 20 bucks. The Body Shop is cruelty free. I think these work really well at lightening your foundation and mixing in with products. The only thing is that I feel like the dropper is kind of redundant. To me, when a product comes in a dropper, you should only have to use a drop or two. I actually end up using the same amount of this product as something like this, just to get the same kind of lightening. So I feel like I would just go through this super fast if I was frequently using this. That's a big downside. And then there's obviously the price tag. So I just feel like for 20 bucks, you'd probably go through this pretty fast. And I would say the finish of this one is closest to a satin finish. Next up is the face. Atelier, I always wanna say Artelier. What's this actually called? Ultra Foundation Pro. I have a little sample cup here because you can get the samples for $1 and the full size bottle retails for $36. So if you're trying this out, definitely wanna get a sample cup first. I did a whole Foundation Friday video on the actual foundation and the mixers. They have a bunch of different color mixers. This is kind of a professional brand. This is vegan and cruelty free and it's silicone based. So overall, this one reminds me almost exactly of the LA Girl 
Pro Mixer. The way that it blends out, the opacity of it, just the whole feel of this and everything reminds me almost exactly of this, except the price is obviously very different. I feel like I haven't given this one enough of a shot to know if this breaks me out or not. So if it doesn't, that would be great because I would definitely choose this one over this one if my skin liked it better. Something that breaks me out might be totally fine on you, but if you're someone who has sensitive acne prone skin, just keep that in mind. This next one is the only oil-based mixer that I have here. This is the Makeup Forever Chromatic Mix. I actually have water-based and oil-based formulas of this, which I did not know. I actually got this off of Glambot, so I didn't really have a choice between oil-based or water-based. I just saw a white mixer and bought it. But now knowing that, I would definitely go with water-based over oil-based, especially if you have acne-prone skin. This one, I just do not get a whole lot of use out of because it's oil-based. It's not super opaque either. I can't imagine the water one being super different with its coverage or anything so as far as the coverage and the opacity this one's kind of a thumbs down for me Even when I added in a decent amount of this it didn't lighten that well and you only get less than half an ounce of product in here it's because of that this one I'm not that into and makeup forever is also not cruelty free they do sell in China so this one is actually pretty great this is the makeup designery HD air liquid makeup this was intended to be like airbrush makeup I got this at iMats and the lady said that I could use it as a mixer as well like without the whole airbrush system which is why I picked it up this one retails for $18 and it's silicone based this thing packs a punch. As far as the drop mixers, you definitely have to use less product than both of these drop ones, the Body Shop and the Makeup Forever. I feel like this is how drop mixers should be. You literally just need a drop or two. Pretty opaque. I've tried this one out with about four different foundations every time it's mixed well. I can't find a whole lot of information on this brand, so I'm not sure if the brand as a whole is cruelty-free, but I did find a blog post saying that their pro line of makeup is cruelty-free. So last up, as far as mixers, I do have a few other things I want to show you, but the last mixer, I use this as a mixer, is the Misha Signature Complexion Coordinating BB Cream. So this is interesting. It's basically a white BB cream. It comes out looking like vanilla bean, like it has little specks of black in there almost. But when you blend it out, you can't see the specks at all. It doesn't actually adjust your skin tone. I kind of got this thinking it's either gonna be like a shade adjusting product where it goes on white and then adjust your skin tone, or it's just gonna be a white mixer and it really is just like a white BB cream. But things I like about this, it mixes great, it's creamy, it's pretty pigmented. As far as coverage, I still think it's less than this one. I would say this is more like medium. I also like that this one has SPF in it. It has SPF 43, which is a random number. Misha is not a cruelty-free brand, but it retails for $34 on Misha's website. I think you can find it cheaper on Amazon. That's where I got it. What I gathered is that I'm pretty sure this one is water-based. It has 30% lotus water in it. This one I'm actually wearing right now mixed with the Milani foundation. It took me two layers of this combination to get full coverage, but I definitely love the finish that this adds. It gives you kind of a luminous BB cream, creamy kind of finish. So I didn't swatch these ones, but I wanted to just kind of mention them as an option is mixing in white concealer. You can also use concealer to mix in with your foundations. For me, I find that it gives me a little bit too much texture since my skin is already textured and I have acne. Typically mixing in concealer doesn't work the best for me. I'd rather just use a foundation mixer. But Kat Von D makes a white concealer. I also have the LA Girl Pro HD concealer. I did a video actually comparing these two products. And this one I actually haven't tried yet. I believe I got this on Shop Missa. It's by the Nabi brand. I think this was a dollar. As far as white stick foundations, I'm still on the hunt. So let me know if you have found a good white stick foundation. I know MAC makes one, but this is the Maron Cream Blend Stick Foundation. I do not recommend this. This thing I do not like at all. It kind of reminds me of greasy Halloween makeup almost. I've tried mixing this in with my Makeup Forever Stick Foundation, the Jolie Stick Foundation. It just doesn't look great. I would not recommend this. I'd hold off until you find a better white stick foundation or even just mix in a little bit of a liquid mixer. So those are all of the products that I wanted to talk about. This is definitely not every foundation mixer in the world. I know Ilmasca makes one. I haven't picked that one up because I do have their skin base foundation, I believe it's called, and I don't like it. It reminds me of the Kat Von D Locket foundation. It's super thick, gave me a ton of texture, so I didn't want to purchase the white mixer. But I think out of all of the mixers I talked about, I have four that I would kind of recommend over the others. For a drugstore option, I think I would say the LA Girl Pro Coverage. I think overall this one is the best. And then the other three I would recommend is the Face Atelier, the Makeup Designery, and the Misha. So I think I hit on everything that I wanted to tell you guys. I hope I didn't forget anything. Just went through a shit ton of information. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. We can help each other out. I hope you guys liked this video and found it helpful. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I do have a whole pale skin playlist, which I'll link down below in the description box that goes through kind of similar videos like this. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.